adults are being urged to go back to their offices. The government's launching a PR blitz to persuade people that it's safe to do so. And what was that gentle PR blitz? Go back to work or risk losing your job. Get back or we'll burn your fucking house down. The government shouldn't scare people back. They should woo people back. And I've got the perfect idea, right? We send Dominic Cummings and Matt Hancock on a national office tour and everyone gets to kick them in the bollocks. We had Eat Out to help out. Let's have drop kick the smug pricks. Always think. You know, then we shouldn't be surprised they're so incompetent. This is a government that advertised a head of pandemic preparedness job. And when did they do that? Six months into the UK's coronavirus outbreak. Let me repeat that. They hired someone to prepare for corona six months after it started. Now, call me mad, but surely better prepare for something before it happens. I'm pregnant. Not if I put on this condom. We're having this baby. I've deleted Tinder. We never met. Head of pandemic preparedness. Who's he hiring? These two. You picture Boris. Oh, yep, this is Marty and the doc, and uh, they're going to travel back in time and uh, fix everything. And uh, as long as nobody calls Marty chicken and he doesn't try and fuck his own mum, I think we are going to be tickety boo. Social gatherings of more than six people will be illegal in England for the foreseeable future. You must not meet socially in groups of more than six, and if you do, you will be breaking the law. What, like you're doing with Brexit? <laughs> <laughs> now, what baffles me? Boris announced these restrictions on Wednesday, but they didn't start till Monday. <laughs> so what did British people do? They got shit faced. <laughs> People were rushing to the pub like this. <laughs> Boris may as well have gone, oh! You have four days to drink, Britain! Kill or be killed! Oh! We have such an insane relationship with booze in this country. Look what this pub owner had to do. A bar owner in England came up with a shocking way to enforce physical distancing. I put an electric fence in and installed an electric fence to keep the customers back from the bar. Social distancing. Uh, uh, what did you want again, Sharon? Uh, <laughs> make your mind up, love. Uh, fucking pacemakers going. Uh. <laughs> Now, predictably, the government have already gone into blame mode. Rather than take responsibility over their test and trace clusterfuck, look who they're pinning the corona spike on this time. Ministers say the rise across parts of the UK is largely driven by people aged 18 to 30 who are accused of failing to observe social distancing. Bloody young people. I can't believe they've been outside. It's not like we told them to go outside by <laughs> offering them half-priced food for a fucking month. <laughs> it's such a piss take. Six weeks ago, they were asking them to eat out to help out. Now, Matt Hancock is guilt-tripping them like this. Don't kill your gran by catching coronavirus <laughs> and then passing it on. Don't kill your gran. <laughs> that is our job. <laughs> How long before they have ads like this? Every time I click my fingers, a grandma pegs it. <laughs> what I want to know, who's this advice for? Like anyone was going to kill their nan. I went, oh, Matt Hancock's right. I was going to smother her with a pillow, but <laughs> he's made me see the lights. Don't. Kill your grand. What other obvious tips has he got? Don't eat your dog. <laughs> Don't drink bleach. Don't you wash your face with this. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. It wasn't, it wasn't just the government blaming young people. Did you see the Daily Mail's front page? Thank you, Generation Z. <laughs> they make it sound like they've done it on purpose. Like they've been licking door handles and chasing pensioners down the street. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't print this story. Eat bat, you wrinkly bitch. <laughs>
Matt Hancock has claimed the NHS test and trace system is excellent. Yeah, and you're not afraid of footballs. <laughs> it's worse when they're in the air. <laughs> How can it be excellent? I mean, have you seen how far people are being sent to get tested? People with symptoms in Totnes in Devon being directed to Carmarthen nearly 200 miles away. One in Penrith advised to go to Dumfries, a trip of more than 50 miles. In London, in one instance, advised to go to a centre in Cardiff, a three-hour drive of 150 miles. <laughs> you may be contagious, so we need you to travel from London to Cardiff and touch as many people as possible. <laughs> See it? Lick it, rub it. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. Is it me or does everything seem hopeless? Doesn't it? Don't worry, though, my friends. The government has come up with a new master plan to save us all. The Prime Minister hopes to avoid a second national lockdown with a mass testing programme called Operation Moonshot. Operation Moonshot plan could hardly be more ambitious. Ten million tests a day, including some results back within minutes. Amazing. Experts, though, say we simply don't have the capacity and the technology doesn't yet exist. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Not only does it not exist, it gets worse. It's going to cost up to 100 billion. Our leader is spending 100 billion on something that doesn't exist. <laughs> Don't worry, Britain. I've just bought a million invisible COVID detectors like this. And they send in the lot. Oh, fuck, I've been done again. <laughs> Still, at least I've got my magic beans. <laughs> no, 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 Boris Beans. <laughs> Do you know the biggest problem? <laughs> The biggest problem that runs through this pandemic? The biggest problem is the way the government have spoke to us. I mean, the daily briefings were a joke. We've contact taste, contact tasting. Contact tasting. Testing. So you repeat your second part of the question. Forgive me, contact, contract, contact tracing. Well, I don't have those figures. Uh, I'll, I'll ask uh, John. Um, and uh, um, our, um, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, um, of, um, uh, uh, they may elude any. No. Uh, it's the short answer. Thank you, Tom. I'll let Chris uh, address that. But I'll yeah. ask John to uh, set out more details and answer both. Patrick, were you the... Did you get the second one, or was that Chris? I've completely forgotten what the first e part of the question was. E <laughs> they struggle with basic English, which is probably why they keep patronising us with three-word slogans. Have you noticed this? Protect the NHS. Stay at home. Go back out. <laughs> but at least they made sense. I mean, the latest one is just words. Hands, face, space, hands. Face, space. Hands, face, space. <laughs> Who's his speechwriter? This guy. <laughs> no one speaks like that. Shops, me, go. <laughs> Milk, remember you. <laughs> Try, I will. What's Boris's economic advice? Runny out of money. <laughs> UK kitty shitty. <laughs> Here's a three word slogan for you talk in sentences. <laughs> We've got to get control of this. The warning from the country's top scientists as Britain enters a second wave of coronavirus. If we don't take action now, we could see 50,000 cases a day by mid-October and 200 deaths per day a month later. The Prime Minister today announced new restrictions for England in the light of rising cases and suggested they could be in place for six months. We must take action now because the stitch in time saves nine. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Things are getting serious, and our leader is Boris Johnson, <laughs> a man who talks in fucking riddles. <laughs> Here's how a scientist explained it. We have to break unnecessary links between households because that is the way in which this virus is transmitted. And here's how Boris Johnson put it. We need to flatten the camel's hump to save Christmas. <laughs> Go on, Britain! We need to flatten the camel, squeeze the gerbil, squash the otter, tickle the badger, <laughs> and finger the meerkat. <laughs> Any 
too much. Too much. <laughs> All we're looking for is a little bit of clarity. Are we going to go into a second lockdown? Yes or no? Matt Hancock. It's not a no, and it's not a yes. It is a no. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, probably, a maybe, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Now, one thing we do know, the test and trace system is an absolute shit show. You can't get online appointments, you can't do anything here. So, I'm worried. I've been trying online every hour, on the hour, for four days. It was a nightmare. It's not on. Well, I'm concerned, honestly. Just shocking. There's nobody here, so why is it fully booked? It's an absolute joke. It's just ridiculous. I'm going to cry. That's how frustrating it is. Whoever designed the system should be st stood up against the wall and shot. <laughs> But no wonder he's angry. Remember when Boris promised this? We will have a test, track and trace operation uh, that will be world beating. World beating? He <laughs> wants to shoot you in the face! <laughs> Christ, a leading scientist has said COVID testing is dying on its ass. <laughs> it's got so bad, scientists are talking like us. <laughs> Every time they see Boris talking, they must feel like this lady. Bang! Oh, shut up, you cunt! <laughs> People locked down. They put their lives on hold. And then, when you said it was safe, we went back out. And all the while, we kind of assumed that you were working on a system that tested properly, like you said you were. And yet, it turns out that the lady you put in charge of the system is utterly clueless. I don't think anybody was expecting to see the really sizeable increase in demand that we've seen over the course of the last few weeks. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's the only thing scientists have said. A second wave. The second wave. A 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 second wave. We're going to have a bumpy ride over the next few months. <laughs> Yes, we are. It was obvious it was going to happen. The second wave was as well disguised as this guy. <laughs> no, you can't have a bank loan. You're a dog. It, <laughs> it gets worse. Cos they didn't get their shit together on coronavirus, it's damaging other services. Have you seen the latest plans for A&E? They are ridiculous. People needing urgent help at a and &E are being asked to book an appointment through NHS 111 before turning up to hospital. You have to book an appointment for an emergency. <laughs> Hello, A&E. You've what? You've chopped your arm off? Right. <laughs> what are you doing, April? <laughs> what? Excuse me. He's died. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? You can't plan for an accident. Imagine that. Hello, can I book an appointment next Wednesday? Because I'm going out with my friend Mad Dave, and last time we hung out, this happened. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like whenever the government try to help the NHS, they fuck it up. I mean, did you hear about face masks? The government spent £150 million on 50 million face masks that can't be used by the NHS because of concerns that they don't fit properly. How can you spend <laughs> 150 million quid on masks that don't fit? Who bought them, Mad Dave? <laughs> <laughs> it's insane! You wouldn't buy trousers with one leg. You wouldn't buy pants that look like this. <laughs> Not only did they waste millions on masks that don't fit in an era where thousands of companies are going under, the British government is investing 170,000 in a company that throws sex parties. <laughs> yeah, they really want us to eat out to help out. It's... <laughs> so, how does the new app work? Well, it shows you the risk level in your area, and then, if cases rise, it lets you know. So, how did the app go down? Were people eager to download it? Have you even heard of the app? No. <laughs> Haven't downloaded it? No, not yet. I'm gonna do. You're gonna yeah. do it? Yeah. When do you think? Quite soon? Yeah, maybe. I will do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think it will make you feel safer? Um, 
Not really. <laughs> Not really. I prefer Candy Crush. It gets worse. <laughs> it turns out the app has a slight glitch. A lot of people are trying to download this and do what you're asking them to do. It doesn't work on older phones. Well, I'm delighted to hear that so many people are trying to download it. But it, it doesn't That's work. Excellent. That's, there's well, nothing good it... about that. <laughs> it's such an amazing clip. It doesn't work. I know. <laughs> Isn't that excellent? <laughs> Trini's like that with everything. I'm leaving you. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, look at his face. Look at it. <laughs> it's the creepiest smile ever. Well, not ever. <laughs> it's crazy, though. We've got an app that doesn't work on all phones, a testing system where you can't get appointments, algorithms that downgrade A-levels. Who's the government's chief programmer? This guy. <laughs> Still, at least closing the pubs at 10 has helped reduce social distancing. The government's pub curfew is branded dangerous as drinkers take to the streets instead. With bars and restaurants forced to close early, many still kept the party going. Ministers insist the measure is necessary. Who could have predicted that getting everyone in the street at the same time when they're shit-faced <laughs> would lead to chaos? <laughs> Let's be honest, the new rules are baffling. You can still play football, which is weird, because when you play footy, you can get quite close. <laughs> If you take a taxi, you've got to wear a mask, but chauffeur-driven cars are exempt, which makes total sense, cos Corona can't survive in a limo. But... <laughs> Help me. But the one that really got me was the fact that sex is no longer illegal for couples in established relationships, which begs the question, what is an established relationship? Does that mean three dates? Ten dates? Are they going to go to prison? <laughs> what are you in for? A W A S. What? Anal with a stranger. <laughs> Smart, isn't it? Who's going to enforce it? The sex police? What are they going to do? <laughs> Just sneak up on people who are banging and ask them personal questions. <laughs> Freeze! Sex police! <laughs> Madam, what's his favourite food? How often does he call his mum? Um. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh chips. Uh. Twice a week. Incorrect. Shepherd's pie and she's dead. Put the penis down and get in the van. Sex police. Imagine that just wandering around. Excuse me, sir, would you mind blowing into this bag? How dare you? That is my wife. <laughs> it's mad. Where are they going to find people in this country willing to ask deeply personal questions? Now, I've got a question for you, ladies. Are you team tight? Tim Tate, or a baggy babe. <laughs> I mean, the clue's in the name. They're called loose women. Boris Johnson announces tough new local coronavirus rules in England. The Liverpool City region is the first to go into the toughest band with no socialising and pubs and bars to close. Christ, the hospitality sector is in tatters. Job losses, businesses going under. I mean, have you seen what pubs in Scotland are having to do? Pubs, restaurants and cafes will only be able to open indoors from 6am to 6pm. No alcohol at all will be allowed. Pubs with no booze? Come on, guys, the lemonades are on me! Hi, did somebody spill my latte? It's... <laughs> it's just not the same. Pubs without alcohol is like... It's like the national anthem sung without fans. Fucking awful. <laughs> What's frustrating for places like Liverpool, if the government had a decent test and trace system, we wouldn't be in this mess. I mean, have you heard the latest cock-up? The uh, number of people with coronavirus in England is 16,000 higher than it was previously reported because of a technical glitch. And what was that technical glitch? Bots? Russian hackers? No. The Excel spreadsheet containing lab results reached this maximum size. <laughs> I've run out of rows. <laughs> Apparently, the Microsoft paperclip was livid. What an absolute shower of shit. 
So don't worry, Boris Johnson is back and he's got a new catchphrase that doesn't make any sense. We need to behave fearlessly, but with common sense. <laughs> How can you have common sense and be fearless? Come on, Britain, swim with sharks, but make sure they've eaten. <laughs> what a week of news it's been. Half of England now face tighter restrictions, including nine million people in the capital. People in London, York, Essex and other areas are banned from mixing indoors. Just as we simplified our national rules with the rule of six, we will now simplify and standardise our local rules. Excellent. And how are these new simple rules going down? The country is so confused. I think it's been confusing from day one, really. I'm sick of it. It's confusion. You don't understand? No. no idea. Nobody knows. There are too many different orders coming in, one after another, and we never know where we stand from one day to the next. He's fucked it. <laughs> <laughs> you can see why people are confused. There's so many rules and loopholes. For example, pubs in Tier 3, they have to shut down, but... Pubs can stay open and sell booze if they serve a Cornish pasty <laughs> and a side salad. <laughs> it's like Boris is making it up as he goes along. <laughs> um, uh, you can go to the pub if you've got a pasty. Uh, <laughs> you can visit your nan if she's eating Monster Munch. And <laughs> gyms are fine as long as you've got a Dairy Lee Dunker. It's... <laughs> People are angry. One pub on Merseyside changed their name from the James Atherton to the Three Bellends. <laughs> it gets madder. Boris Johnson confirms indoor sex is banned in certain lockdown tiers. <laughs> the economy's in tatters. And he's promoting dogging. <laughs> Protect the NHS. Fucking a hedge. <laughs> but make sure you take a pasty. <laughs> this is madness. You can't have sex outside in this country. <laughs> it's freezing. You get your cock out, it looks like you got three bollocks. <laughs> but where's the romance? Who wants to give someone a hand job whilst holding an umbrella? <laughs> oh, Britannia. <laughs> also, let's not muck around. There's so much grey area. What does indoor sex mean? Can you cuddle in a caravan? <laughs> Get tugged in a tent? <laughs> Can you flirt in a yurt? <laughs> Bust a nut in a hut? <laughs> Give head in a shed? <laughs> Can you deep throat in a motorboat? <laughs> Can you wham bam, thank you, man, if you own a wigwam? It's <laughs> ridiculous. And this is my favourite detail of the story. Under these guidelines, if you're having sex in this country, you must adhere to the rule of six. <laughs> well, if six of you want to bang in the street, that's fine. <laughs> but seven, <laughs> put the dick down <laughs> and step away from the wigwam. <laughs> There's more, there's more rules, right? As if students haven't suffered enough. Have you heard what's happening in York Uni? Students with corona are told to stay in rooms a minute longer if there is a fire in the halls. <laughs> like, who's gonna do that? Oh, there's a fire. One. <laughs> two. I better not endanger other people's lives. <laughs> three. I wouldn't want to give them something that they'll statistically recover from. <laughs> oh. It feels like the reason we've got all these mad rules is because is Boris didn't deliver what he promised. We will have a test, track and trace operation uh, that will be world-beating. World-beating? It's a bag of shit! <laughs> Millions of us have downloaded the app and look how many alerts it's sent. The coronavirus contact tracing app for England and Wales has only sent one alert about an outbreak of coronavirus since it was launched two weeks ago. <laughs> it's lazier than my eye. 
We laughed a bit too much at that, to be honest. <laughs> that app is the fuck off. <laughs> That's... <laughs> that app is as good at saving people as this lady. Prosecco or baby, Prosecco. <laughs> are being drawn up to make Christmas as normal as possible. Senior medical and scientific advisers said they were working on a plan so that families across the UK might be able to celebrate together as close to normal as possible. We all want some kind of Christmas. We need it. We certainly feel we deserve it. Let's be honest, he was always going to save Christmas. I mean, he's got no time for other religions, but Christmas, that's fine. Think about it. It's Diwali. Stay inside. Ramadan. Don't you meet up with each other. It's Christmas. Ding dong, merrily on high. Fuck everyone but our God. <laughs> it's true. So, what are the new rules? Up to three households will be allowed to form bubbles and meet indoors for five days from the 23rd to the 27th of December. Presumably that's so Boris can see all his kids. Now, the only <laughs> snag... It's going to be risky. There is no point in having a very Merry Christmas and then burying friends and relations in January and February. This is the dilemma. Have some fun or kill your mum. <laughs> you know what we need? Zorbs. <laughs> I'm being serious. Put your nan in a zorb. We'll have a Christmas meal. She'll have the time of her life going around, happy. <laughs> if she eats too much, we put her on the wheel. Spin it! Spin it! <laughs> It's got to be a better idea than this. World Health Organization suggests swapping Christmas dinner for COVID-friendly picnic in a park. A picnic in December? What did I get for Christmas? Nipples like bullets and a shriveled cock. It's madness. We'll look like this. <laughs> Not only that, for five days of Christmas to happen, we'll need another month in lockdown. Another month. I'll say this now. If that happens, nobody is doing dry January. You having a break? Am oh, I bollocks? I'm doing furlough and Merlot. <laughs> we won't be off the booze, we'll be swimming in it. Our bathwater will look like it's been touched by Jesus. Dry January, it's gonna be so wet, Cardi B will do a song about it. Did Boris announce the vaccine in a clear way? What do you think? Uh, we've talked for a long time, or I have, about the distant bugle of the scientific cavalry. Uh, coming over the brow of the hill, I can tell you that tonight that toot of that bugle is louder. What the fuck are you talking about? We want to know about the vaccine, not a brass band. The toot of the bugle is louder. That's not advice. That sounds like something he'd say when he's shagging. Princess Nut Nuts, hold my bugle. It's about to toot. Thump it, pump it, stick it on my trumpet. I am so alone. It wasn't just Boris. <laughs> All right, Jace. It wasn't just Boris talking nonsense. Even one of his top scientists got involved. So this is like, um, you know, getting to the end of a playoff final. It's gone to penalties. The first player goes up, scores the goal. Then he started talking about public transport. This to me is like a train journey where you're standing on the station, it's wet, it's windy, it's horrible, and two miles down the tracks, two lights appear and it's the train. Well, that's that cleared up. The vaccine is like a penalty shootout on a train whilst playing the bugle. I wasn't the only one who thought the press conferences were shit. Look at the face this sign language guy pulled. This is a lateral flow test. Look at his face. If ever an expression summed up how we feel about 2020, it's this. <laughs> Not everyone was upset. Matt Hancock did a radio interview about his post-vaccine plans, and he sounded very giddy. What is the thing you most look forward to being allowed to do once uh, again? I, uh, Julia, I love parties, and I can't wait to go to a... Proper party. A proper party. Playing all the games. Pin the debt on the north. Pass the pass of blame to the NHS. Watch Boris toot his bugle. Imagine going to a party attended by Matt Hancock. I've seen footage of him partying and it is harrowing. <laughs>
We're not. They don't call you Mr. Fahrenheit. They call you Twat Hancock. <laughs> I think this guy puts it best. Don't stop me now. Now, in other news, the vaccines are flying in. More promising news on a COVID vaccine that could protect even the most vulnerable in society. A vaccine developed by Oxford University has been shown to be up to 90% effective in trials. It means there are now three COVID vaccines which could be approved next month. Amazing. Matt Hancock was so excited he turned into a poet. We can see the candle of hope and we must do all that we can to nurture its flame. Nurture the flame cuddle the candle. He's turning into Wordsworth. It's ridiculous. I've got a poem for you. There was a health secretary called Matt who COVID he tried to combat. He gave jobs to his mates, bought masks at bad rates. Now everyone thinks he's a twat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just poetry. He came up with a hip new nickname for Jonathan Van Tam. This is an incredibly important uh, question, and I'm going to ask JVT to comment. If I can hand over to JVT. I just want to correct you, JVT. Thanks. I'll take the first and hand the second to you, JVT. 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 Thanks very much, uh, JVT, for cheering us all up. He's called JVT. Yeah, you know he. He's my BFF. J, J, what's, what's the nickname you've got for me? Tell him. Tell him. Cunt. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> he didn't say cunt earlier. <laughs> Made me look like a real dick there, Jonathan. <laughs> the reason we're seeing more of Matt Hancock was because of this. And I've got to self-isolate because somebody I was in contact with a few days ago has developed uh, COVID. Again? What's he been doing, licking door handles? Luckily, Boris was still giving out tips. Don't forget, hands, face, space. Which is great advice, none of which he followed in this photo. That bloke's got COVID and Boris clearly not two metres away. You think I'm shocked? Jeremy Vine analysed it like it was VAR. So we know that the Prime Minister is five foot seven, which is 175 centimetres. So that is the fixed distance in the photo. But let's take the arrow and move it down there. So we see 175 takes us either side of their, their feet. So on the face of it, it looks like they're a bit close. In fact, if you actually go at the closest point, the arms, how close is that? Let's have a look. The answer is half a metre, one foot seven inches. But I'm wondering if that's fair, because your elbows don't breathe. <laughs> your elbows don't breathe. He's having a breakdown. Any other scientific insights? So actually, what I think we've got to do is we've got to measure Tie knot to tie knot. So where they're actually, their mouths are effectively. Holy shit, he's measuring a TV with a tape measure. <laughs> Using Boris Johnson's height, I can tell you from tie knot to tie knot, it's one metre 18. And I can tell you, you need to sit down. <laughs> Incredibly, he wasn't finished. Well, why is the window closed? You've got to throw, it's a sash window, whack it open. If this fella has to bring a coat in, so what? So what? Open the window! Let your elbows breathe! No, so, we're out of lockdown! Yay! A lockdown in all but name. Almost the entire population of England is put into tier two or tier three restrictions. Oh, we're still in lockdown. Oh. Could be worse, mate. At least we're not up north. Three quarters of those in the highest tier are in the north of England, where some areas have had strict restrictions since the summer. Poor sods, they've seen less daylight than the fritzels. Some of them have been locked down since July. They'll be staggering to salons looking like this. <laughs> One hero summed up the mood. Can we just ask you how happy you're feeling right now? I'm bloody miserable, actually. Pubs are shut. What do you expect? <laughs> and the pubs that aren't shut are having to do this. Hospitality venues will be closed unless they serve a substantial meal. So, how did a pub in Brighton get around that? They've come up with a pint called Substantial Meal. Genius. <laughs> they should start selling this. <laughs> Apparently, after a pint of that, you want to finger a cappuccino. It's the best bit of a cappuccino. It, it's the best bit of a coffee. <laughs> the, the... Now, the lockdown hit people hard. Jeremy Vine had a chat with an invisible barman. Excuse me, mate, you, is there any service here? Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what yeah. Like? Well, uh, what, what time you got? 
it's five to ten. Last orders. Last orders. Uh, te right. Well, we won't get thrown out till eleven. Give us ten pints, mate. Uh, you need to order some food. Sorry, mate. All right. There we are. Te watch this. Ten pints and a Scotch egg, please. <laughs> One sec. Hello? Yeah, I need a doctor to Channel 5. <laughs> yes, Jeremy Vine. No, he's ordering imaginary pints. <laughs> yeah, got to be. Mind you, no wonder he's flipped. Have you heard about the new rules for Christmas? No hugging, no singing, no playing past the parcel. The strict new rules to follow in our all new Christmas. Who the fuck is playing past the parcel at Christmas? <laughs> what else are they gonna ban? Trick or treating? No more Easter eggs. Some people were so confused by the rules, Chris Whitty had to give up tips on nan cuddling. Would I encourage someone to hug and kiss their elderly relatives? No, I would not. Do not spoon your granny.